Good day, Solusi, and good day, viewers who are viewing us from all the media platforms, from home, in the comforts of your offices. Welcome, as we are going to be talking about science. It's a very important subject, which has been misconstrued by a lot of people. A subject that has made many people to, have, to gain confidence, many people to have different views in their different facets and aspects of life. Uh, but uh, allow us that before we talk about this subject, we just pray and uh, get into our subject. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, I would like to thank you so much for giving us this wonderful aspect and opportunity to learn, expand our minds, to encourage us to develop our communities, ourselves, and in the biggest and most important way for us to be developed in the salvific way. Father, we thank you as we are going to be learning. Be with us, give us that wisdom, and may you grant us that success. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our very first verse, which comes from Proverbs chapter one, verse seven says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So you'll understand that as we're going to be talking about this subject, there are two words that will continuously come, come up and pop up, wisdom and knowledge. Now, by definition, what is science? Science is the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Now, if you read this definition, there are two key words that are coming out, observation and experience, experiment. For you to observe, there must be something that is observable. And for you to experiment, there must be certain conditions that are controllable for an experiment to be done. Now, it is important that we, we get to understand that there is the physical and the natural world but whence cometh this physical and this natural world? That brings us to an important aspect of the origin of life or the origin of science. If we go to Genesis chapter one, the entire chapter is talking about the origins of life, where the life comes from. And it is important that science on its own, it comes from scientia, which is Latin, which means it denotes knowledge. Now, the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So in everything that we do, be it study, be it observation, be it experimenta experimentation, we need to acknowledge him. And indeed, if we do so, he shall be able to direct our, way, our ways. Now, there is the beginning of the beginning the beginning of the world. Where does the world come from? If we go to Genesis chapter 1, we find that God created. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, God created. What did he create? He created habitats. That is the land. The land is the one that gives us the terrestrial environment and the terrestrial habitats. He created the water. That gives us the aquatic environment or uh, the aquatic environments. Now, he then goes on to create animals that were going to be inhabiting the same habitats that he had created in the same chapter. That is, we find now the creation of the animals, that terrestrial, and the, the creation of the animals which are aquatic. Now, it is very important to note that Genesis chapter 1, verse 20 to 22, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly. Let the waters bring forth abundantly. The moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament. And God created great worlds and every living creature that moved, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. So we find that the aquatic animals were created together with the birds. And it is very interesting that if you are to analyze or observe the flesh 
of aquatic animals and the flesh of birds. They are all termed white meat. And Paul, Paul observes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 38 and 39. I'm paraphrasing it. He says that all flesh is not the same flesh. We have this, the flesh of beasts that we term our red meats. And then we have the, the flesh of fishes, of, of birds. And, 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 and he goes on to demarcate how these flesh, fleshes are, are characterized. Now, it is also important to note that when God had created the habitats, he also provided the foods that these same animals were going to be feeding on. And that's when you find that he gave rise to the vegetation that is your wood species, that you find that you have the trees that give us fruits, we have the trees that are beautify the, the environment, and then we have non-wood species that, that is your, um, your herbs, your forbs, that, that beautify the environment. So the environment was beautiful by just looking at it. The, the environment was filled with food because all trees, all plants brought fruits. And before the sinning of man, there were no thorns. Thorns and briars later on came as a result of the sinning of man. The very interesting thing that happens when God creates man, he says, it is not good for Adam to be alone. And when he had created Adam, Adam had three things that we can find in every human being. He had the mind, he had the heart or the seat of emotions, and he had the physical body. And all these three, they need to be developed. Now, the very important thing that God then does he tests to see if this human being has got the same mind as the mind of God, as his particular mind. What experiment did he do? The first test that God gave to Adam, that is in line with the beginning of science, that is based on observations of the structure and behavior of the physical, of the, of the physical and natural animals as he saw them. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, um, we read, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Now, if you, you need to understand and read carefully these scriptures, God did not bring the animals for Adam to give names. God brought the animals to see what Adam would call them. In other words, God was testing the state of the mind. God was testing if Adam would see and view things and observe in the same way he observed and saw them. Now, God creates Adam, and when he creates Adam, he says, it is not good that the man should be alone. Not because that God did not um, know that man had been created. He had designed him to be a social being. Not at all. He does something that is very interesting. First of all, he brings the animals to, to, to existence. And if you read verse 18, it says, And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. So in other words, God is saying, I have designed Adam not to be a solitary loner. I have designed him to be a social being, an individual to interact. Remember, God has made Adam to have a mind. He has made him to have emotions. He has made him to have the physical being, the physical structure. So in other words, the emotions that God has designed in men, they seek to be expressed. Hence, God is now saying, it is not good for Adam to be alone. In other words, scientifically, by observation, it is not proper, it is not good for one to be alone. It is not proper or good for one to be a loner. True science requires us to be able to interact to be able to engage, to be able to communicate with others 
with nature, with the God's creation, be it inanimate and animate. In other words, now God says, verse 19, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast. In other words, he formed every wild animal that is terrestrial and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. So God is saying, I am going to bring these animals to Adam. I want to see if Adam sees things, views things, has got the same perception as I have. In other words, if God designed a zebra, he wants to see if Adam would tell that this is a zebra by merely observation. So this is the beginning of science in its truest sense, and it's being expressed in the book of Genesis. In other words, now God brings all the animals to Adam, and they remember God had made them male and female. But the preceding verse said it is not good for Adam to be alone. So God wants Adam to realize by observation, by study, the physical and natural world, and the animals as they come before him, that it is not good for him to be alone. He must be having a companion because each and every animal was coming with a companion and both of them were male and female. In other words, he was also learning by observation that there must be a distinction between male and female. So all the animals came and Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. And the names that he gave, that was the name thereof. In other words, God is saying, the first Adam that is spoken by Paul in 1 Corinthians, the same Adam which was earthly, which came from the earth, had the same mind of the second Adam, which was heavenly, which came from heaven and was spiritual. In other words, the first Adam and the second Adam thought, viewed, perceived things in the same manner. So God then brings this aspect to Adam to say, you need a companion by observation. So Adam knew all the animals and was able to identify them based on their physical appearances, based on their behaviors, based on the observations that he made and the names that he gave were the names thereof. Now, God gives wisdom and God gives knowledge, but God does not give signs to someone. Someone has to have the time and the ability to observe. When they observe, they get to see the mind of the grand omnipotent designer. They then get to see the emotions of the designer as they are expressed in the design itself. Now that becomes true science, which brings people to the conclusion that there is a creator, there is a designer who designed everything. We would like to look at just one important um, case study, one important example of one who truly understood what true science is all about. And we need to look at Solomon, the wisest man to ever live on planet Earth. And we get this from Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse, verses 10. Now, Solomon is before the Lord and he says to God, God, give me now wisdom and knowledge. Remember, we spoke about these two words, knowledge and wisdom. And they are constantly popping. These are the aspects, these are the things that are God-given. They can only be obtained from God himself. And Solomon understood the same, and he says, God, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? In other words, Solomon is understanding that for him to be a great man, for him to be an effective man, he needs to understand true science by observation. Observation of the natural world gives you lessons that you later on learn and apply in the real world of humanity. For instance, Solomon is the same who says, go to the ants, you sluggard. He observed the behavior of the ants, the hard work that is put by the ants in 
their sustenance in their day-to-day -day livelihoods. And he then says, if you don't want to be a lazy person, if you don't want to be a loafer, you don't want to die of poverty or hunger, go to the ends and learn the practical lessons that you get there. Now verse 11 says, God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, and or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither hast, hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Now, when wisdom and knowledge was granted unto him, what did Solomon study of? He studied of trees. He studied of birds. He studied of beasts. He studied of all creeping creatures. Now, the important thing about science, in its truest sense, as exemplified and exhibited by Solomon. Solomon did not study about plants. Solomon studied plants. Solomon did not study about trees. Solomon studied the trees themselves. In other words, he went to the trees. He observed the trees. He learned by observation and experimentation. And whatever he saw about that particular tree, made him to understand that there is a great omnipotent designer behind the cedar tree. When Solomon observed the ants, he did not study um, uh, uh, entomology as it is announced today. He did not study zoology as it is mentioned today. He did not study uh, botany as it is mentioned today. He studied the trees themselves. And by observing the trees themselves, he saw the love of the designer in the design of the trees themselves. So we can learn and understand the practical aspects that if we study science in its truest sense, when we study things instead of to study about things, when we study animals instead, to, instead of studying about animals, when we study human behavior instead of studying about human behavior, then we begin to understand the wisdom and the knowledge of the great omnipotent designer. As we now conclude, God says he is an, a, 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 wonders, a, a wonderful individual, a wonderful being who created everything. And before he gave the Bible to anyone, he gave people nature to study nature, for them to see his love to see redemption. They could see redemption from the plants that were in Eden. They could see the love of Christ from the plants that were in Eden. And indeed, God has also given us his mind to study. And his mind, we see his mind in his word. His mind, we see it in Christ himself. himself. For Christ himself is God's thoughts made audible. And when we study Christ, when we observe Christ, we get to understand the mind of Christ and we get to understand the love of Christ and we get to understand that indeed our God is omnipotent and is loving and he is indeed the one who desires the best of our welfare and wants us to grow and magnify and enlarge and reach the highest standard that he has set in each and every individual. Let's be wary of this thing. Let's be, under, uh, let's be observant of this thing. Let's be cognizant and take cognizance of this thing. We need to study the structure, the behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experimentation. When we have done this, indeed, we have grasped what true science is all about. May we bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, I would like to thank you for the time that you have given us to understand, to pick a few germs that are abundant beneath at the surface of your word, that we indeed understand what true science is all about, and that we understand that if we study science in its, in its truest, truest sense, we will indeed enlarge, become great as Solomon was. But above all, when we understand and study science as in its truest sense, will understand that there is a grand omnipotent designer behind all the creatures, nature, and things that we observe. And indeed, we'll be drawn unto you. And indeed, our lives, our communities will be changed for the best. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.